Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, you're going to see that thumbnail. We're going to be talking about World War III. Yes, yes we are. Um, we have a lot of stuff we're going to go over today. Um, you're going to need your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word. Verse by verse of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Okay, make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow me along because every once in a while I'll skip a groove. The mouth will be going faster than the brain. Okay, so check me out. Be a Berean. Search these, search these things daily. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay, I am going to give you opinions Opinions that are based upon scripture, okay? This is not a doctrinal video for us today, okay? Because the majority of what we are going to be looking at today has nada, zilch, zip, zero, nothing to do with us today doctrinally, okay? All right? We are going to be looking through the scriptures and I'm going to share with you my opinions on certain things, basing them off of scripture, okay? In the comment section, if you want to do whatever, that's fine, okay? This is not a doctrinal video, okay? You got to remember that because the topic, oh, you got the Viking and you got the Chinese guy there, you know, Viking, uh, the Russians, Rus, Rush. You know, Russia gets its name from the Rus Viking, okay? So you got the Russians and you got China, okay? The two superpowers of today. Well, what about America? Eh, America is in control of the Vatican. And the Vatican has been allowed to run the world, okay? But we have to remember some things, okay? When talking about this subject. Number one, first and foremost, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 19. Okay? Follow me along. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. What are we to study? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Bibles remove the word study and put, put like, you know, you look in the NIV, the ESV, and all these other Bibles out there. This, this is, these are the scriptures. Even though it says Bible, within here it doesn't say Bible, okay? All right. Distinction. Distinction, okay? But in the scriptures, the scriptures tell us to study. Study. What are we studying? The word of truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And we have to rightly divide it. What does that mean? Everything in the scripture is not written to you. The written the scripture is written for you. Yes. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? But not all of it is written to you specifically, doctrinally within the dispensation. Okay? Thus, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? All right? For example, the way one it was made right with God in the Garden of Eden it was not the way one was made right with God during the dispensation of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, That dispensation is similar to the one we have today, but there are uh, some glaring differences. Number one, the seal of the Holy Ghost was not there. Okay, number one. Okay, number two, it was a faith predicated by obedience. Okay, Abraham said, get out. 
and he did it. Noah was said, build an ark, and he did it. So it was that obedience, it was a faith predicated upon obedience, different than today, okay? The way one was made right with God during under the law was not the way that one was made right during the time of the patriarchs. Under the law, it was faith and works. You had to keep the law in order to be right with God, to be saved, as it were, okay? The way we are made right with God today is not the way that you were made right under the law, okay? That's rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? Instruction and in righteousness, uh, how to explain that simply? Okay, you want to learn how to fear the Lord? Read the Old Testament to instruct us in righteousness. Whose righteousness? His righteousness, okay? The way we are made right today, saved today, is not the way that it was during the Garden of Eden, during the uh, time of the patriarchs, under the law, okay? Okay, today we are saved by His grace through our faith, apart from the works of the law, okay? You understand? This is, I, this is as simple as I can put it, okay? The way one is going to be made right with God during the time of Jacob's trouble is not the way that we are made right today with God, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, erroneously referred to as the Great Tribulation, okay? The Great Tribulation does not appear in Scripture, okay? We're, we're going to look at that, all right? But the way you are made right during the time of Jacob's trouble is not the way we are made right today. Okay, that's rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, that's the simplest way you can say it. There will be a lot of links in the description box. Uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, which is a two-part video. You have further questions about this because you're a Christian. <laughs> you probably not have heard about rightly dividing the word of truth, or you've listened to these jerks from the uh, independent fundamental Baptists who say that dispensationalism is evil. Okay, of course, those guys who are going to hell and leading you to hell, of course, they're going to say the truth of God's word is a lie. Okay, that's rightly dividing the word of truth. The things that happen during the time of Jacob's trouble are not things that are pertinent for us today in this dispensation. Okay, you have to remember that, my friend. You have to, have to, have to rightly divide the word of truth because if you don't, God will be ashamed of you. Okay? Now let's continue. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Uh, like you got to keep the commandments today. <laughs> we're, we're in the midst of... T People actually teach this. Guys like that stupid uh, Perry. Uh, what is that? Um, John... Um, Whatever his name is, that Perry Stone, Perry Stone guy and that wicked uh, traitor to his people, Jonathan Kahn, teaching you his stuff about trying to make the things of the book of Revelation doctrinal, doctrinal for us today. And you see on YouTube a lot of these idiots talking about, you know, how we're right now in the midst of like the fifth seal. That is, a, that is, that's crazy. No, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay. You got creep, these Christians. You can find it here on YouTube. Telling you that right now we're in the midst of the seals being opened. I, I wish that was hyperbole. I wish that was exaggeration. That's not. People are actually telling you that right now, today, we're going through the, the, the seals being opened. How could they get away with this? Well, Roman Catholicism, who is Christianity, and in the church buildings, it's, it's Catholicism. It's, <clears throat> you know, this algorithm wants to attack channels that attack Satan's church. Come on, boy. All right. So, let's continue. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection, the redemption of the purchased possession, is past already. And overthrow the faith of some. 
Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. And we are built upon a rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the rock of Catholicism, which is their little Peter and a stone. And, and you look at my, uh, sand under a microscope, it's little, little tiny stones all put together. Okay? But there's one foundation that we are built upon, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. This seal. And what is that talking about? What is that talking about? Hold your place here. And this is another thing that so many people are attacking today. Eternal security. Once saved, always saved in this dispensation. Why? Because God himself dwells within you personally. Okay? Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that ye believed, you ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, that's a catching away, ridiculously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, the day of redemption is the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, which so many people are against. They're telling people that we're going to go through, that the Christians are going to go through the Great Tribulation. And they're right. Christians, Catholics, you know, Christian, Catholic, they're one and the same. Okay? Christianity is Catholic. Look here on YouTube and look at the universality, if I'm even saying that right, of Christianity. And you're going to defend Christianity. Good luck, pal. Okay? Good luck. All right? But so many people are attacking the redemption of the purchased possession and once saved, always saved, eternal security. Okay? That's like a lot of the main thrust. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, you are once saved, always saved. Okay? In the time of Jacob's trouble, there are 144 Jews, Hebrews, descended from Shem uh, that are sealed unto the day of redemption minus, uh, who is it? Uh, Dan and Ephraim, okay? Minus that, sealed uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. But that's it. That's it. The rest <laughs> are pretty much up the creek, okay? But see, that seal is God living within you, okay? Eternal security. You cannot, once you're saved, sealed, you're sealed, okay? The Lord ain't going anywhere till you get redeemed, okay? All right? We are eternally secure. All right? So, verse 19 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, sealed unto the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Okay? The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth Christ, the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And see, the heretics is like, well, how can someone who is sealed sin? Uh, why don't you why don't you see what Paul had to say about that in Romans chapter seven? Okay, enough of this tomfoolery. This is nonsense. Okay, we are once saved, always saved, and there is coming a redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. That is the root of the problem. That so many of you are going to be deceived by these Perry Stones, uh, these uh, Jonathan Kahn, these charismatic devils, okay, who are coming around trying to take things to the book of Revelation to make them relevant for us today doctrinally. Uh-uh! It doesn't work! They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you become Mark the Messenger, okay? A scoundrel devil. Okay, people, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. And see, while we're looking at this topic today, we also have to remember this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. we got a lot of stuff to go through today, so we're going to be going to crappy though, okay? Like I said, this is not a doctrinal video. I'm going to be sharing opinion with you based upon Scripture. But see, when it comes to this thing about World War II and the end times thing, we have to remember this. From number one, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. That's it. If you would rightly divide the word of truth, that would probably solve a lot of your problems. If you're not saved, never mind. <laughs> okay? You need to get right with the Lord according to his terms, not your own. You know, not booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way. Okay? But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 100, verse 8. For we know, we know, we who are saved, sealed unto the day of redemption, born again. Okay? The Lord lives within us permanently. Unlike any other dispensation, except for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, who are Hebrews descended from Shem, okay? But in the Garden of Eden, the patriarchs, the law, eternal security, that permanent seal, the Lord living permanently within the believer was not there, okay? Okay, so. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, our, our skin suit that we are in, okay? We have a building of God and house and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens, our spiritual body, okay? For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven, our heavenly body, okay? Which resembles this, but isn't this. Because remember the Lord, he could d disappear and appear just like that, walk through walls and stuff. He ate and because he, wa he wasn't hungry because he wanted food. Hey, you know, uh, in heaven, you know, you can imagine eating a 10-course banquet meal and not gain gaining uh, a millimeter or milliliter of, of pounds or whatever. Whatever, you know. You can stuff yourself full and not have to worry about getting a big Buddha. Okay, all right, but just let's continue. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, this, you know, this sagging skin suit, okay, do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life, our immortal eternal bodies that we're going to get with the Lord, okay? Now, he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is ourselves by our own belief. You weren't expecting that. No, is God, okay? By his grace through faith, okay? Who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, one God comprised of a spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I are, okay? We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. We're made in God's image, okay? Earnest of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. I'm comfortable down here. I got the second, you know, he's going to redeem us. Can, can you wait? There's so much stuff I want to do. You're crazy. Go away, okay? For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay? To be absent from the body and to be, excuse me, present with the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 on verse 39 addresses this, okay? The eternal security we want to get out of here. And see, that's what you and I, as the church of the living God, who rightly divide the word of truth, we have to remember. A lot of this horror that is going to come upon this earth, we are not going to be privy to. Okay? Not saying that we won't see horror of war in this day and age. Yes, we could very see America, Russia, China all going to war. Yes, we can, see, we can see that. We are going to see war because, I mean, look at the wars in history. You know, they, and on that, you know how they call them world wars? Think about this. 
World War I, World War II. They were called world wars because the worlds, the nations of the world were involved. But where were they? They were isolated where? In Europe. Were they not? Come on, weren't they? World War I, World War II specifically. It was concentrated over there in Europe. For example, we didn't have German troops marching in downtown Woodstock. Okay? Some like to argue, it's like, well, what about Pearl Harbor? What about Pearl Harbor? That was an attack on American soil. Um, Hawaii was, is an island which was purchased of America, right? Right? It wasn't that they had troops on, like, in California or in North Dakota because of the Chinese uh, sleeper cell troops in Canada and here in America. Okay? Okay? Some people like to argue about the Pearl Harbor. No, no. You didn't have an invasion force here in America like, like you did over in Europe with World War II. Okay? And what we're going to consider today about World War III. There's going to be a World War III, okay? Well, of course. But is it going to be another war which is centralized in Europe? Or is it going to be, because you, you, you know, you, you discuss this topic with people, and especially with some of the kids today, it's like, well, yeah, but, you know, we didn't see, we didn't have Germans marching down the street down here. That's right, we didn't. But see, is World War III going to be where it's going to be in even our backyard? Hmm. Hmm. Is it going to be a true world war? Is it going to be a true world war? And of course, when you add nukes to the thing, uh, yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, it is. World War Three, which many is World War Three in the scriptures? Hmm. Now, of course, World War Three is not mentioned in the scripture, nor World War Two, but is it? prophesied in a way and any kind in the scriptures hmm? I think so I think so see I'm giving you opinion based upon scripture this is not doctrinal okay but you got to remember okay I personally believe okay and even if even if that crazy Viking launches a nuke at America or the Chinese which own America whose sleeper cell soldiers are already in America thanks to Jesuit immigration, okay? There is an army hidden here in America that at the behest of Arturo Sosa can rise up and squish America just like that, okay? And in your nation too. In your, yes, even in uh, jolly old England, okay? Yes, there is a sleeper cell, as the terminology is, the military term terminology is. There are these little sleeper cell units of soldiers loyal to the Vatican that are here in America, okay? Comprised of other nations. Sh the Shemitic people of China, okay? Think about it, all right? We have been invaded. We have been overrun, just not on the surface. We have been invaded and overrun through immigration. Okay, we've talked about that before, which they, the, the, the powers to be don't like that video much, but we, we've discussed that before, okay? But here again, we as the Church of the Living God, okay? Verse six, therefore we are always confident Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Okay? For we walk by faith, not by sight. And all these charismatic people who want to talk about World War III and bringing in all the stuff about Revelation and stuff and trying to make it applicable doctrinally for today. Oy vey, Okay? They want you to walk by sight, not by faith. Okay? Verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present from the Lord. So we were saved, even if that crazy Viking decides to nuke us, 
okay? Or nuke you. Because remember that that psychopath said threatened to use nukes on Ukraine and we've and you know, most of us Americans have heard about the spy balloon from China Chinese or Semitic okay all right things are not looking good we are going to see conflicts absolutely but look at what happened after World War II okay look at what happened after World War II all right and speaking of, like World War I, what was the object of World War I? For the Jesuits to establish what? The League of Nations. That didn't happen. Okay? That didn't happen. And remember, I believe before World War I, there was the sinking of the Titanic. Why was it? Does the Jesuits sank the Titanic? Yes, they did. It's like, oh, come on, Brad. The Jesuits didn't know that there were going to be icebergs out there. You're right. But here's the point. That ship, the Titanic, which held the greatest opposition to the Jesuit Federal Reserve Banking System, which is a private institution here in America, okay, which is Sosa's Bank, okay, the Jesuits Bank, all right, the main opponents of that were on the Titanic. Remember, about the Titanic. There was a fire in the boiler room or something so bad that it kind of like uh, did something to the paint on the outside and you can look this up for yourself. There was a fire on board in the Titanic before she set sail, okay? Iceberg or no, the Titanic was built to go down to the bottom of the ocean. The Jesuits were like, oh good, there's an iceberg so we can make it look real clean. If there were no icebergs, that ship was going to sink no matter what. Okay? Why? Because the Jesuits wanted to establish the Federal Reserve Bank. Without the Federal Reserve, there's no World War II. Without the Federal Reserve, there's no Korea. There's no Vietnam. There's no Persian Gulf War. Okay? The Federal Reserve is the Jesuits' Catholics' bank. Okay? All right? So, in World War II, World War II, the main object of World War II was to destroy Jewish people in the concentration camps, in the Holocaust. Yes, there were other people destroyed in, the, uh, in World War II and in the Holocaust. Yes, but the main thrust of it was to destroy the Hebraic people. We talk about that in the uh, videos about the Holocaust, which will be in the description box, okay? That was the main point of World War II. And of course, what came out of World War II? The United Nations. And also what happened after World War II? Israel, 1948. Okay? So where they failed with the League of Nations, they got the United Nations in World War II, and Israel is established as a nation in 1948. Okay? All right? But World War III... Okay, World War Three. scripturally, I believe it says that it means that it's going to be a world war in the literal sense. And especially because, I, I mean, you read in scripture about the wars in scripture, the wars were there, you know, to kill the people and to take their land. The land wasn't, you know, poisoned or anything like that. I mean, yes, that happened sometimes where they, they stopped the things and they poisoned the waters, yes. But the land would heal in a shorter period of time. You add nuclear missiles to the equation with the radioactive stuff and whatever, okay? And yes, I do believe that World War III is going to encompass nuclear weapons, okay? All right? And think about it, too. In the book of Revelation, with all the destruction that happens in the book of Revelation, the thousand years of the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. It's going to be an agrarian society. We're going to look at those verses, okay? All right? Think of how long it's going to take to get the earth back to heal, okay? All right? Think about that. You got, we need to think about these things. Because when they, they nuke us... The poison radioactive thing, it's going to destroy that. Perfect example, the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War, which America lost. The Vietnam War, which was funded, uh, promoted, uh, instigated by the Jesuits. 
Okay? America lost the Vietnam War. But so did the Vietnamese. Who won the Vietnam War? The Vatican. Because of how Agent Orange. On this channel, there, there's a, that video about the, the after effects. Still to this day. Because of what? The biological weapon created. Agent Orange. And here in America, the soldiers who died of cancer because of Agent Orange. And the birth defects and how the, the crops that come up from uh, areas polluted by Agent Orange, they're poisonous. And nukes get involved. Okay. World War Three. World War Three. World War III is going to be one of the most horrible wars the world will ever see. One of the most, but not the most. We're going to get to that later. But, okay, now, what about World Wars One and Two? Was there any kind of thing in Scripture where it's mentioned, perhaps? World War I, I do not know about. But I, and we talk about this in the Holocaust video, but I do believe that there is mention of something that did happen in... World War II, the Holocaust. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Okay. Like it says in the book of Romans chapter 11, the covenants and promises of God that were given on to the Jewish people cannot be repented of. Okay. All right. Even though in this dispensation today, we are saved by his grace through faith. Okay. Okay. When it comes unto the Jewish people, who are the apples of God, the apple of God's eye, us Gentiles were grafted in. We have not replaced the Jew. Okay? We have not replaced the Jew. Okay? But you gotta remember, a lot of the things, the, the promises that the Lord gave on to the children of Israel is also the curses. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 15 on verse 29. But Jeshurun highly favored, wax fat and kick. Thou art wax and fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he, Israel, forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the capital our rock of his salvation, our Lord Jesus Christ. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, the gods of Kabbalism, the many gods given by mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Yeah, deck the halls, buddy. Okay? To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that capital our rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Okay? And you look at the Jewish people during, uh, like, around that time of World War II, uh, Eli Wiesel's book, Night, I highly recommend you read that. Um, they were practicing the exact same things that Israel is doing today. Kabbalism. Okay? Rejecting their Messiah. All right? And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, us Gentiles. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation and a fool says in his heart there is no god so a foolish nation is a nation that behaves as if they say in their heart there is no god that's what us gentiles are okay remember salvation is of the jew okay you gotta remember that the jew is the apple of god's eye why do you think satan hates the jew so much why do you think you see these stupid british israelites or these stupid Black Hebrew Israelites or Roman Catholicism 
blatantly, brazenly teaching you replacement theology. Okay? The foolish nation, the Gentile nations. Okay? We were grafted in, and this is verified in uh, Romans chapter 11. Paul talks about it. Okay, I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation, Gentile nations. Okay, us being grafted in. We Gentiles of Japheth and of Ham, and yes, even of Shem, are grafted into that tree of Israel to provoke them to jealousy. And and Jewish people, Jewish people, Hebraic people taken from Shem, they're not jealous of this Christianity. If they are, it's because they want to become a charismatic to line their pocket book. Okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. All right? For a... Now here's where it gets interesting. For a fire is kindled in mine anger... And shall burn unto the lowest hell, the fires of the holocaust, the ovens. And shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Okay? I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will send mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, the ovens of the holocaust. Okay? Like I said, I'm giving you my opinion. We talk about this in the Holocaust videos, which coadjutors, especially the Brizrielites, don't like. Okay? But we talk about this all in the Holocaust thing. But let's continue. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. The, what is it, the Croatian Eustachi? You read up upon what some of them did? The Eustachi, which I believe was from Croatia, they were so bad that they even had the SS guys like, oh, wow, wow, you, you guys are pretty, um, yeah, we, we do a lot of bad things to these, these Jews, but you, you, you guys, uh, wow, yeah, you, you guys stay over there, okay? Well, you know, that's how bad they were, okay? Okay? Beasts. The Nazis were beasts. And you got to remember, Okay? you got to remember, you hear often that the Holocaust was the failure of Christianity. They're right! They're right! What is Christian but Roman Catholicism? Okay? Note the second video in the Holocaust, the Catholic Connection. Okay? Hitler was a, was a Catholic. You see a lot of people talking about how he was an atheist. Jesuit Ken Helvin even did a thing like that, that he was an atheist. No, 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 no. He was a Catholic. He was a Catholic. The atheist thing is to divert you from the truth that the Nazis were supported by the Catholics. And of course, like Brother Alberto Rivera says, that the Catholics put on this thing that, well, we were oh, prisoners and forced to... No. 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 The Nazis were established by the Jesuit order. And here's, here's, a, here's a real sting for us. Who funded Hitler? The Federal Reserve... And this is provable. Advro Manhattan, uh, even Eric John Phelps, who, why, how is Eric John Phelps still alive? Okay. <laughs> Controlled opposition, anyone? But never mind. Okay. But it is very provable. Provable. Who funded Hitler? America. Through the Federal Reserve. You know, the gold and Fort Knox and that kind of stuff, which doesn't exist anymore. That's why the Federal Reserve, which, you know, in our paper dollars and stuff like that, with the Seal of Solomon on there, and uh, we talk about that vin videos in the description box. Also on this stuff, check out Perfect Standard KJV. He Short, sweet little videos. Great testimony too, brother. Um, check his stuff out. He talks about it too, okay? But let's continue. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. And Cyclone B, 
that was the poison of the showers and the stuff like that. The poison root that, that was in that was apparently from the poison of the asp. You check that out. Okay? I personally believe what we're looking at here in Deuteronomy is telling about the Holocaust. Like I said, okay? Like I said at the beginning, um, this is what I believe. I'm showing you it does fit. Okay, this is my opinion, and we go over it real in depth in the Holocaust video, but let's continue. Verse 25, the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into the corners, the diaspora. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Verse 27, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, and God doesn't fear anything. What is he talking about? lest their adversaries should, should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done this. In other words, the Lord allowed the Nazis to do what they did to his people, the Jew. Yes. Where was God in the, author, uh, in the Holocaust? Right there, because he allowed it to happen. Okay? And what he's saying in verse 27, God doesn't fear anything. I'm, come on. No. The enemy is saying, well, I did this because of what I've done. You could do nothing against me unless it was given to you from above. Okay? Verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So, we have a lot of stuff here that lines up with what happened in World War II. World War I, I don't know about, but World War II hmm, fits. It does fit. Okay? But now, let's go back to Matthew 24. Now, in the previous video, we went a little through this. We're going to go through it again because this is the topic. And several brethren had many uh, good insights on this. So this is a collaborated effort. You know, one brother asked about it. I talked to another brother who's finally found some peace in his life. And uh, another brother, my best friend. We Many people had insight and input into this. Okay, so. But Matthew chapter 24. Let's glean a little through this, okay? We're going to be reading verses 3 on to verse 35. Can you handle this? Now see, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the climate before the redemption of the purchased possession. The redemption of the purchased possession is, you know, this. Matthew chapter 24 doctrinally has absolutely nothing to do with us. Okay? Nothing. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. It's talking about when he comes back with us, his second coming, okay? But let's read. Beginning on verse, uh, verse 3 on to all the way to verse 35. And see, these heretics who don't rightly divide the word of truth, who want you to walk by sight, not by faith, they come, and these, these ridiculous, stupid, if you're ignorant, a babe, and you don't know about the redemption of the purchased possession, that's one thing. That's one thing, okay? Okay? Links in the description box. We talk about that at length, okay? But if you know the argument and stubbornly, stupidly, which is willful ignorance is stupidity, uh, say that we're going through the time of Jacob's trouble, you're stupid. You're stupid. If you don't know, that's one thing. If you know and say, we're going through the great herd Elijah, you're stupid. And your breasts stink. Put that in your pipe. You idiot. We, we mustn't sugarcoat this stuff, brethren. Okay? Because the main doctrines for us today are under attack and people are believing it. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us! Who are the disciples? All Jews. Okay? Jews. 
Hebrews from Shem. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, the second coming, and the end of the world? Okay, so verse 3 tells you right there to whom this is addressed. Doctrinally not for us. But, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Christ means anointed one, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, are we not hearing of wars and rumors of wars right now today? Instruction and righteousness, yes, yes. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going forth conquering and conquering, we're going to look at that today, um, he's going to be destroying everything in his path. So there's going to be wars going on, but they're also going to be hearing rumors about what that man of sin is doing, I believe, to the sons of Ishmael. Okay? All right? But let's continue. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We are hearing about that today. Instruction and righteousness, yes. Okay? See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay? For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. And that we are seeing today. Okay? We're going to, they're going to see that come to fruition, the perfect fulfillment of this during the time of Jacob's trouble. But to instruct us in the righteousness, we are seeing these things today, not at the height that they're going to experience it during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, you and I, who are saved, we're not going to go through that. And you don't have to either. Okay? Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginnings. Okay? The beginnings. Now, here's, the, here's a, a switch in his narrative. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Turn to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Okay? Are they, is this happening to us today? Is this happening to us today? Fortunately, some in some nations, yes. But on a whole scale, no. Okay? John chapter 16. Verses 1 on verse 3. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. One and the same being. Okay? All right? So, the switch in his narrative is in verse 9. One of them, okay? Then they shall deliver you, the Hebrews, the Jewish people, referring on to the time of Jacob's trouble, because the body of Christ is not on the earth. We have been redeemed, okay? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And John 16, 1 on verse 3, <coughs> was addressed unto who? The disciples, the Jews, okay? Instruction and in righteousness? Yes! Doctrine? No! you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Verse 10. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, more so than today. Okay? And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right here. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. During the time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Hebrews, Jews, sealed out of the 12 tribes of Israel, minus Dan and Ephraim. Okay? All right? It's faith and works. Prove that to you absolutely. This is one of the simpler ones. Okay, you get really, and we have before, but Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Okay, 
Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Written in Revelation chapter 14, after the redemption of the purchased possession, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Look, people, you got these easy believism scumbags telling you that it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. And they're calling themselves dispensational. They are lying to you. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Eternal security is not there, save for the 144,000 Jews. The rest of y'all that get left behind, you're screwed, okay? Eternal security, once saved, always saved, is not there, save for the 144,000 Jews. And you got the easy believism telling, uh, the heretics telling you, just believe, once saved, always saved. And yes, once saved, always saved is for us today. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, no. Unless you're one of the fortunate 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. Hebrews. Okay? It's faith and works. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The command, the, the law is going to be reinstituted. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the religion that he's going to be pushing is what? Christianity. The Jewish people, the Hebraic people, are going to be practicing their Judaism. Yes, they are. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Christian. And he's going to be promoting Christianity, extreme Roman Catholicism. So see, where he says here in verse 13 in Matthew 24, but he should, that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You and I today, we already looked at it. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We already looked at it, okay? You and I don't have to endure to the end to be saved worth nothing. Worth nothing. Why? Hold your place here. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you, by the way. I was wondering when I was going to... Okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Did I say Hebrews? Excuse me. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and verse 10. But God who is... Not, see, this is a different dispensation. What happened? Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Okay? Read Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? All right? But Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 4 on verse 10. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, made alive, us together with Christ by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up to and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heavenly places. Seek to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, eternally secure. Eternally secure. We, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved. We're once saved, always saved. If I die, I'm going to be in heaven. Even as bad as I have fallen and have messed up and made mistakes, I'm once saved, always saved, because the Lord who lives within me has sealed me until the day of redemption. Okay? Comprende? We don't have to endure to the end to be saved for nothing. Let's continue. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Yes, the people during the time of Jacob's trouble are going to look back at what was there, but is no longer, okay? They're going to look at that example, okay? Because the gospel that is preached today, the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Uh, saved by grace through faith, is not the gospel of the time of Jacob's trouble. The gospel of the time of Jacob's trouble is the kingdom of heaven, which comes at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend, okay? Let's continue. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, 
Not of works, lest any man should boast. The works are being talked about there are the works of the law, okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? We don't have to endure to the end to be saved. Who does? The Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, dear friend. If you don't, you're going to be marked the messenger. If you don't, you're going to fall for all these smoke and mirror lies and um, fairy tales told to you by the likes of uh, Perry Stone, Jonathan Kahn, and all these wicked charismatic channels who see dreams, who see God, mate, and all this nonsense. You're going to fall for that. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 14. Look at that. You look at that verse 14 in Matthew 24. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We are not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven today. We are preaching the gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom of God. See, you got it. Rightly divide the word of truth. The kingdom of heaven is always the physical, literal kingdom. The kingdom of God is spiritual. Okay? You look up the word, words, kingdom of heaven. They only appear in the book of Matthew. And the book of Matthew is uh, when the kingdom of heaven is always, every single time, the physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem. Kingdom of God is can be a reference onto the kingdom of heaven, yes, but the majority of the time it is spiritual, okay? And that's defined by context, all right? So the gospel of the kingdom, what gospel is that? The gospel that's found in the beloved Sermon on the Mount that heretics want to make applicable for doctrine today. And that's not the case. Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine during the kingdom of heaven. Not today, nor during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because the kingdom of heaven comes at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. Okay? So the gospel of the kingdom that is mentioned there in verse 14 is what? The Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Just an example. Okay? Let's continue. All right. Verse 15. When ye... Now here's a shift again. Okay? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. The holy place, the third rebuilt temple, which will be built in troublous times. Okay? Meaning, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Could they start building it nowadays? I, I suppose they could, but... We'd be like, hey, 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 they're building that, whoa. I don't believe, and I don't believe scripture backs it up any otherwise than the third temple is going to be rebuilt during the time of Jacob's trouble. And like I said, don't believe some of these charlatans, okay? They're going to be able to get that temple up Lickety split because they're going to be backed by that man of sin who has the deep pockets of the Vatican. They're going to get that temple up in no time flat. So the holy place there that is being talked about is the third rebuilt temple. Okay? But the abomination of desolation. Daniel chapter 9. Okay? Daniel chapter 9. It's not a statue, dear friend. Not a statue. <coughs> Of Mary or of whatever. No, the abomination. And uh, verse 15 When ye see, therefore, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, Daniel chapter 9, just one verse, verse 27. And he, he, a man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and this wasn't Trump. <laughs> and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he, 
that man of sin, the son of perdition, shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that, sh and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay? And while we're at it, go to Daniel chapter 11, verses 30 on to verse 38. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him, that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? The Antichrist does not appear in Scripture. Uh, Antichrist appears in Scripture. Yes, the in front of the word Antichrist. Find it. Find it in the authorized version and put it in the uh, comment section. Go ahead and find it for me. Good luck. You're not going to. But, for the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Take the mark of the beast. An arm shall be shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. It's not a statue. It's a man. Okay? And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Yeah, the people that do know their God. We're going to look at the, what happens in Matthew chapter 24. But see, the abomination that make it desolate. It's a man. It's not a statue. It's not a system. It's a man. Okay? It's a man. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is the abomination that make it desolate. It's a man. Okay? Okay. Verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Talking about the turmoils of the time of trouble. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Yeah. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And you read about this in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Yes, the abomination that make it desolate. That man of sin, the son of perdition, going into the third rebuilt temple, saying that he is God. That and he's you know the thumbnail in the previous video with the Baptist Jesus on the left hand side. I believe that's what the uh, man of sin is going to look like, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, but he's going to look like the Baptist Jesus with the suit and tie. Okay, yeah, yeah. But anyway, neither shall he. Regard the God of his fathers. The man of sin, son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. In order to deceive, Satan is going to have to become what he hates the most, the Jewish Hebraic people. Okay? Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, whether he's a queer or celibate, whatever. Whatever. Okay? Whatever. People want to say he's queer, okay? Or I personally believe it's a thing of celibacy. Roman Catholic celibacy. But remember, Roman Catholics are not the only ones that preach celibacy. But that's the one you think of right away, okay? Like a celibate pope or something like that. Celibate except for like little boys, of course, perverts. But let's continue. Okay, so the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. And Mr. Grider, he is not macaroni from France, you idiot. Ugh. Okay. Nor regard any God. Okay. Neither shall he regard the God of his father, nor the desire of women. And I'm sure a lot of women are going to desire him. But he's like, get, get away from me. I don't want you. You know, I'm sure. Nor regard any God, for he will magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces 
and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. So this is the abomination that make it desolate. Okay? It's a man. It's a man. It is a man. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. They who know their gods will do their God, excuse me. They who know their God will do exploits. Then they then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. The Jews. What are all the body of Christ doing in Judea? Body of Christ isn't here. This is for the time of Jacob's troll, dear friend. Talking to the Jews. When the Jews, when that man of sin goes into the third rebuilt temple, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, like that thumbnail in the previous video, okay? All right, yeah, and the, those ones who have taken the mark of the beast, you know, who want to cleave to them with flatteries, okay? But the ones who haven't, they're going to be like, oy vey. And then they're going to be led to the scriptures. They're going to run to the mountains because of that man of sin standing in the holy place. Okay. Let him, verse 17, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field turn back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, Neither on the Sabbath day, because the law is going to be reinstituted. But remember, remember, the religion of that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be Christianity, extreme Roman Catholicism, while the Hebraic people are going to be allowed to practice scriptural Judaism with the hopes of what? To bring about their Messiah. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come in at a convenient time and say, ah, oh, by the way, I am your Messiah. And all the while, their Messiah has already come, but he will come again. Okay? Now let's continue. Okay? For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Hmm. 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 So, what do we see here in this timeline? Okay. The body of Christ is gone. Okay. The body of Christ is gone. All right. Then persecution against the Jewish people. Okay. Because that man of sin goes into the third rebuilt temple looking like the Roman Catholic, Catholic Jesus in the visage, okay, saying he is God. They're going to flee to the mountains and they're going to do exploits, okay? But then that man of sin is going to turn all his attention onto the Hebraic Jewish people. And then it's going to make the Holocaust of the Jew look like nothing. Even up to that point, with all the death and destruction that you are that you guys who get left behind, that you're going to see, it's it's when he goes after the Jews. Okay, hold your place and let's go to Daniel chapter eight. Daniel chapter eight. Daniel chapter eight, verses twenty three on to verse twenty five. Okay, Daniel eight chapter twenty three on to verse twenty five. And in the latter time of their kingdom, whose kingdom? Hmm? When the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Yeah, because he'll have the wound by the sword and live. And it's uh, when he, I believe when he gets wounded, that's when Satan will enter into him, like Judas, the son of perdition, the sop. Okay, we've talked about that before. Okay, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and, does, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay, not the Christians, but the Jews. 
okay? The Jews of Shem, taken out of Shem, the Hebraic people, okay? And through his policy also he shall have craft, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, excuse me, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, because he's going to declare himself to be God, okay? But he shall be broken without hand. And the vision in the evening of and the and the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Uh, I know I'm reading more. And I Daniel fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Okay? Alright? He's going to destroy wonderfully. He's going to turn all that hatred that Satan has for the Jew, the true Jew, the Hebraic people, is going to be poured out after that, to the extreme after that. Because remember, he's going to use the Jewish people to build that third temple, okay? Which will probably be uh, rebuilt in the course of a year at, at the most, okay? At the most. And he's going to allow the sacrifices and stuff to go on, all the while conquering and to conquer, destroying the economies and whatnot. All this stuff is going to go on. Then he's going to, when it gets really, really bad, he's going to go into that temple saying, I am God, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. And then the Jews that are like, wait a minute, no, you're not. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Now go to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Revelation chapter 16. We're going to read verses 12 on to verse 16. Okay? And this is talking about the seven, the seven angels with the seven vials of the wrath of God. Okay, this has nothing to do with us today. Like the seven seals, we, people actually teach that right now today. 2023, February what, the 6th, that we are in the midst of the seal. Okay, if you're babe, you don't know better, fine. Okay, fine. But you've been saved for years and years and years, and you're a Christian, King James Bible, you're a Christian. And you're saying that we are going through the seals right now, or you're stupid, and you're a liar, and you're deceiving people, and people are buying into that deception. The seven seals, the seven vials, has nothing to do with us today. Nothing, brethren, people. Please understand that. You're falling for those charismatic devils, the Catholic devils, okay? They're lying to you, okay? Revelation 16, verses 12 on to verse 16. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, <laughs> that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. I've been, I, and I ignore these, about how the thing that's going on with the Euphrates Euphrates today, that see, the Euphrates is being dried up. What are they telling me when they send me these links? That right there is happening today. No, you idiot. Why? Because the church of the living God is still on the earth. Okay? I'm not going to be kind to that. You're trying to say that this, what we're looking at right here, the drying up of the Euphrates, is happening today. That this prophecy is happening today. Go away. No, it is not. Yeah, okay, yes, it's drying up today, okay? There's evidence to support it. But in this fashion, no, no. See, lying signs and wonders that Satan is being allowed to do, okay? Okay, be aware of that, all right? Yes, that thing with the Euphrates is happening today. Yes, but not this, not this. No, not to this magnitude. No. Right here, what we just read, okay, what we just read here in verse 12 is not happening today. Okay, it is not. Okay. Okay. 
This happens during the time of Jacob's trouble. And I saw three unclean, <laughs> I love this. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs <laughs> come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth, mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Hey, Trinitarian! There's your Trinity. Yeah, it is right there. Bravo, you wicked Catholic. There's your Trinity right there. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at that. The dragon, beast, and the false prophet. Elsewhere, it's the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. But the dragon, the devil, one and the same. There's your, there's your trinity. There's the trinity. And it's what? Of Satan. People, I, 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 I know you've been brought up as a Christian and you know, God, one God, and blah, 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 three persons, which is a doctrine as crazy as Charles Manson is. Okay, the Trinity is a lie. The Trinity is a lie. Three gods, three people, three persons make one God. Three gods make one God. One plus one plus one equals one. <laughs> no, there's your Trinity. But note the thing about frogs, okay? Go to Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. Well, what's the A there for? It must be for a reference or something. Because I don't, I don't have it. Okay. But uh, Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 4. The plagues on Egypt in the book of Exodus. Every single one was a judgment against the multiple gods of Egypt. For our instruction in righteousness today, Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Okay? And Look at the world today. Look at the world, which is Egypt today. Look at all the gods that there are today. And remember, in Egypt uh, mythology or whatever, there was a god that had the head of a frog. Okay? And, you know, our French countrymen, uh, you know, it's like, ah, a frog legs, wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> My French, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That was bad. But, you know, you know, frog legs and also down there, the uh, the French quarters in Louisiana and stuff like that with the, you know, sauce bon, you know. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist that. Here, here, here. There you go, here. There you go. Sorry. But the thing about the frogs, Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. So the judgment of the frogs was a judgment against the gods of Egypt. All the plagues, every single one of the plagues in the book of Exodus was a judgment against the plurality of gods of Egypt. You look at the world today, look at all the little G, like Charles Manson himself said, which is Jesus. There, there's all kinds of Jesus. Okay? Okay? So, back to Revelation chapter 16. <laughs> Again, there's your, there's your Trinity, Catholic. There's your people. The Trinity is satanic. Okay? But there's your Trinity. Let's continue. Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world. Not just isolated, the whole world. To gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. This is the only time the word Armageddon appears in scripture. And it is a place 
Okay, you hear the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon, it does that's the only time it disappears. Okay, Armageddon is the place, okay, not the actual battle itself. Okay. At the second coming, there is going to be a war. Yes. We're gonna look at that here uh, right quickly, actually. But okay, people want to confuse World War Three with Armageddon. Okay? You you know it. Come on, come on, you've heard it. That World War Three is Armageddon. You've heard that. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. World War Three is not Armageddon. Okay? Because World War Three, okay, what we're getting at, I personally do not believe that World War Three will happen while the Church of the Living God is on the earth. Not saying that we won't see wars of a great magnitude, not saying that at all, but an actual World War III that is fought on all fronts, not just in Europe, I don't believe that the Church of the Living God is going to be here for that. Okay? Okay? But see, people are telling you that World War III is Armageddon. Is it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? I do not think so. But let's go back now to Matthew chapter 24, and let's pick up, because we left off at verse 27, uh, verse 21. Let's continue. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake shall those days shall be shortened. Now, elect in this context, he's talking to whom? Jews. So elect in this context is who? The elect of God, the Jewish people. Elsewhere in the book, on uh, the Pauline epistles, you read about the elect, which the Calvinists, the British Hebrew Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites, like to confuse. The elect for today is the elect who go the way of the elected way of the cross. Okay, here in this context, elect is the Jewish people. Don't let people deceive you. Okay, let's continue. And it's going to be so bad. It's going to be so bad that unless the Lord shortens it, everybody's going to be dead. That's the magnitude of the destruction that Satan within that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be doing, especially unto the Jewish people. Okay? Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, the Jews. Behold, I have behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east, lightning, and then the Lord in what is that, Luke chapter ten? Behold Satan falling as lightning from the earth, uh, from, uh, to the earth. Hmm? And in Isaiah chapter 14, okay, how Satan will be like the Most High. Yeah. But anyway, for as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Verse 29. Okay. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, you see the tribulation. You don't see the great tribulation. The tribulation of those days. It's not a title. Okay. Time of Jacob's trouble is the title. Okay. Of what is coming. After the tribulation of those days. Okay. It's not the great tribulation as a title. He's describing the tribulation of those days. Okay? It's not a title, dear friend. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they, shall, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Yes, 
Every eye is going to see the Lord coming at his second coming. With the redemption of the purchased possession, not everybody is going to see that or going to hear their name. They're going to hear, we're going to look at that. Uh, they'll hear thunder, but we who are saved, we're going to hear our names get called just like that and we get caught up. Okay, more on that in a bit. But everybody at the second coming is going to see him coming. Everyone, all eyes are going to see him. Okay. Uh, all right. And he shall send his angels, that's us, who go up with him. With, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, the Jewish people, from the four winds, and one from one end of heaven to another. From one end of heaven to another. Okay? People like to confuse this and say, well, there are two redemptions of the purchased possession. No. No, this is not. There's only one redemption of the purchased possession. Yes, uh, the two witnesses, uh, he says unto them, come up hither. But the bodies of uh, Moses and Elijah go up to heaven and everybody sees their bodies going up to heaven. You read about that in, what is that, Revelation chapter 11. Okay, uh, all right. You see, they're going to see the two witnesses ascend up to, into heaven at the come up hither. Okay, so that greatly differs from the redemption of the purchased possession because in a moment and the twinkling of an eye, and we're going to look at that, is when we get caught up. Okay, so that means there is only one redemption of the purchased possession, which kicks off the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, here he sends out his angels us who go up with him to get those who are, don't have the mark of the beast of the Jews and bring them out of there so judgment can be done on those who are left there. Okay? Two are taken, the other are left. Okay? Let, let's keep reading. Okay? So this is, not, uh, this is not the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? This is not. There are no such thing as two raptures. Even Ruckman fell for that. Okay, that ain't true. That ain't true. Okay, two raptures will be in the description box for you. Questions? Check them out. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now learn a parable of the fig tree. The fig tree is synonymous with Israel. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth his leaves, and putteth forth leaves, excuse me, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye. When ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. And Jesus Christ is the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. The generation that he's describing here during the time of Jacob's trouble is what he's talking about. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Verses 29 on to verse 35 is talking about what? What? The second coming. Revelation chapter 19, okay? Again, you know where you re we read, I believe it's in Luke, where he's like, then two shall be taken and the one shall be left. These heretics like to say, see, that's the, that's the rapture, right? After the tribulation. No, no, that's not what that is. The angels, we who go up with the Lord, he's going to send us out to get those guys. Like uh, uh, Lot got taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, it's like, come on, you're coming with us, and then the Lord's going to destroy the tares. Okay, that's what that's talking about. It's not a redemption of the person's possession at all. Okay, all right. Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. But Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 18. Where are you at? Okay, here's the second coming. And I saw heaven open, and a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Remember that. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Final and Seventh Capital W, Word of God. Uh, in that community thing here on the channel, we'll list the seven times of the Word of God. So check that out, okay? 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. It's you and me, brother, sister. When we get redeemed, we come back down with him. Okay? Note verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right, uh, I, I have written down there the verse 18, but we, we'll, we'll just stop right there. Uh, well, now let's read to verse 18. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And, okay, so this devastation at the second coming. Okay, is this the battle of Armageddon? I don't know. Okay, Armageddon is only mentioned one time, and it's the actual place. Okay, and it doesn't say here that within that place of Armageddon is where he does this. Okay, but is this World War Three? Hmm? And look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Is the Lord Jesus Christ actually going to have a literal sword going out of his mouth killing people? No. Is not the scripture, the word of God, referred to as what? The sword of the Spirit. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So when you look at uh, Revelation 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Okay? Bruce chapter 4, 12. Luke's chapter 4.12. Not 12.4, Brad. Hebrews chapter 4.12, okay? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. That's a person right there. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And what is that in Ephesians? The armor of God or is that Galatians? I, I, I get that confused. Um, is, is that, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And those are lowercase w's. Okay. So when our Lord comes back, in verse 15, in Revelation 19, it says that a sharp sword is going out of his mouth. And you can even, on Google image, see these pictures with Jesus with this big sword coming out of his mouth. No, 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 it's not like that. He's going to be speaking his what? His word. His word. He's going to be speaking and destroying the armies of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Is this World War III? If anything that qualifies as a World War III, eh, I would say that would be it. Would not you? Hmm? Is this the Battle of Armageddon? I don't think so. The Armageddon is the place. Okay? Not the actual conflict itself. Okay? Not the actual, because it only mentions what it only mentions it once, once, and it's a reference to a place, not the actual event. Okay, so does this qualify as the Third World War? That's a good candidate. That's a good candidate. And see, verse fifteen, the Lord is going to be speaking. Destroying people with what he says. The sword of his mouth. The word of God. Okay? Not like you can look on Google image with a, a picture of the Roman Catholic Jesus with a sword coming in out of his mouth. No. He's going to be speaking. Okay? Alright? So, 
Does this qualify for a good description of the World War III? I believe so. Like I said, I do not believe that we are going to be present for World War III. That doesn't mean that all hell or chadez can break loose and other nations of the world are going to get involved in a conflict. Not saying that at all. But a true world war where it is fought on more fronts than just Europe, which is actually a world war. Okay, remember, they called it World War One and Two because world, uh, the nations of the world got involved and they went to Europe. But when you read the book of Revelation, that's happening all over. Not centralized just to Europe. Okay? That's happening in Canada. In what was once called America. In Mexico and like Tijuana and uh, Puerto Rico. And yes, in Africa. Okay? It's going to be not just confined to Europe. That's why World War III is going to be vastly different and vastly more devastating than any of the wars heretofore. Like we said at the very beginning now, we're going to be in Revelation. We're going to be in the book of Revelation now. Okay? I personally, uh, you can disagree. Like I said at the beginning, I was giving you opinion based upon Scripture. Okay? But you got to remember, you and I, Church of the Living God, we're not going to be here for the events of the book of Revelation. Okay? The book of Revelation is not written to us. Okay? It's written for us, but it's not written to us. Okay? you got to remember that. There are, you know, uh, the, uh, the churches in the first couple of chapters of the book of Revelation, types of persons also, great for instruction in righteousness, Okay, types of a uh, person, a person is a spirit, soul, and body. Lots of instruction in righteousness. Doctrine for us today, none of it. Okay, all right, has nothing to do with us. But, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door, and Jesus is the door. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. A door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. That's the redemption of the purchased possession, dear friend. That's the redemption of the purchased possession. Before anything happens, you see the warnings unto the seven churches, which can be an instruction in righteousness applied unto us as types of persons. Okay? You got to remember that. All right? But we, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, we get called up, come up hither before anything happens. Okay? That's the redemption of the purchased possession. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're just going to look at one verse. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in, a twink, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. See, the trumpets are going on right... Uh, no, no, that's not what he's talking about. Okay? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So, this come up hither... That's being talked about in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. The redemption of the purchase possession happens quickly. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, okay? All right? Unlike, and we're going to find that. I might have to pause it, because that's not part of these extensive notes. But um, the this differs from the come up hither in the book of Revelation about the two witnesses. Okay? Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and not Donald Trump. People actually have believed that. Okay. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, people will look at verse 16 and say, so you're saying that there are two second comings? No, 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 no. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, okay? The fact that the Lord can appear unto one person and not unto others at the same moment is not unheard of. For some people to hear what uh, God speak and others to hear, say, mumble, jarble, jargon, or thunder is not unheard of. Hence the redemption, I believe, hence the redemption of the purchased possession. John chapter 12, verses 28 on to verse 33. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Then answer, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Yes, he's talking about the cross. He, yes, he's calling all men unto him, but not everybody is going to go unto him his way. Okay? Salvation is there for all, but you have to go his way, not boot the door out of the way. Okay? Okay? But see, right there in verse 29, the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to, to him. So this tells us what? That some people heard the audible words that were said. Others heard that it thundered. So some heard what was said and some didn't. Hmm. Hmm. You want a little bit stronger uh, portion of scripture on that? Absolutely. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Here's, here's stronger. After the death, burial, and resurrection, after the stoning of Stephen, this dispensation, the death, burial, and resurrection brought in this dispensation, the, this dispensation that you and I are in, okay? But Acts chapter 9, verses 3 and verse 7. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, isn't it, you devil? And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Paul saw the Lord with his own eyes, meeting one of the scriptural criteria to be a apostle, meaning they all saw the Lord and were handpicked by the Lord. Okay? All right? The 12 apostles. That's what they had in common. They all saw the Lord with his eyes, with their eyes, and the Lord said, okay, you, you know, the 12 apostles. Okay? Judas fell by transgression. He's gone. Who replaced him? Not Matthias, whom the apostles chose themselves and wanted the Lord to bless what they chose. <laughs> no, God chose Paul. And to go with the scriptural criteria, God saw Jesus Christ with his own eyes. Okay? Even says, uh, I, I forget where that is, uh, have I not seen the Lord? Okay? Paul saw God. He saw him with his eyes. Verse 7. And when the men which journeyed with him stood and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Oh. Yeah. So this idea. Okay, and uh, in uh uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. People say, well, you're saying there's two uh, second comings. Uh, oy vey, no, man. No. Okay. We who are saved. Okay. He's going to be like, come up here. Okay. 
He's going to be, I come up hither. It's not a second coming. We who are saved, all of us, of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, every single one of us, brother, sister, at the same time, in a twinkling of an eye, we're all going to hear our names individually called at the, at the same time, and we're going to go up and we're going to see the Lord. That quick, okay? That quick. It's going to happen rapido, okay? But it's not going to be one of those silent things. We're going to be taken out of here like that. We, how is God going to say all our names at once? He's God. He can do that, okay? But we're going to hear, hear our names called at the same time. Those who are not of us, they're going to hear something. They might even see like you're standing there witnessing to them, and then all of a sudden they blink, and they're like, whoa, whoa. Oh, can you imagine what that's going to be like for those people who get left behind? Oh, boy, they. But they're gonna maybe they'll maybe see you disappear just like that. They might hear something. But see, the Lord is calling his own out. That's how that works. Okay? Now hold on one second. I do have to find this. Alright, this didn't take long at all. Revelation chapter eleven. Here's another come up hither. Now the come up hither, which we have just talked about, is the redemption of the purchased possession that Paul taught and preached about. Okay, which happens quickly in a moment of an eye and a twinkling of an eye. Faster than that, you can be witnessing to somebody, and then the Lord says, Come up hither, we're going to hear it. It's like, Oh, whoa, whoa, faster than you can blink. Okay, the person who gets left behind sees you disappear, going to hear something, but he's not going to hear his name because he doesn't belong to the Lord. Okay, that's how that works. There's another come up hither. Okay, but see, the, the redemption of the purchased possession, dear friend, rapido, quick, fast, fast like in a hurry. Here's the other come up hither, which is nothing like the redemption of the purchased possession. Revelation 11, uh, verses 11 and 12, the two witnesses. Check this out. And after three days, <laughs> let's add verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another just like they do at the pagan Roman Catholic Christ's Mass. Yeah. 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 And they shall dwell upon the earth and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets, Moses and Elijah, it is not Enoch. Okay? Tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the capitalist spirit of life from God tells you who, what that capitalist spirit is, entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. So, okay, God comes into Moses, Moses and Elijah. They stand on their feet alive. People are going to see this because remember the Jews require a sign. The redemption of the purchased possession, quick, fast, faster than that. Okay, this spear comes into them and they're put on their feet. Now look at this. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. So yes, yes, there is another come up hither. But it is not the redemption of the purchased possession because one, the people saw God go into them and they, they stand up on their feet, Moses and Elijah, and then they ascend up to heaven while everybody is doing this. Totally different than the redemption of the purchased possession, people. Okay? Okay? You, you, you with me? Okay? But what happens now after the redemption of the purchased possession? Don't see see these arguments. Well, you're saying there are two, uh, there are two uh, second comings. No, we've already explained it. There are, you said there's only one come up hither. But see, there's a... Okay... Look at the situation surrounding the come up hither. The come up hither in Revelation chapter 4, 1 is not the come up hither of Revelation 11. Okay? It's not. We just looked at it. 
Okay, be aware of these arguments. This may help you to answer some of these and to help you to know and have faith and confidence that we are going to be redeemed before this time period. Okay, but after, after we get caught up, what happens? Revelation 6, 1 and 2, okay? And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, the seven seals, there are those today who want you to believe that right now today that the seals are in the midst of being open. If you're a babe, okay. If you're a babe, a novice in Christ, fine. But if you've been saved for 10, 20, 25 years, for years and years and years, uh, yeah, and uh, over time, I, by just reading the Bible, I, I'm convinced that we're going to go through the great tribulation. You're an idiot. You're, you're willfully ignorant. You're stupid. You're stupid. Okay? The seals are not being opened today. Number one, the body of Christ is still on the earth. Number two, it happens after we get redeemed. Okay? So, and who opens the seals? The Lord. And I saw when the Lamb, that's the Lord Jesus Christ our Father, opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four, four beasts saying, Come and see. Now remember how the Lord had many crowns on his head? And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he, that man of sin, the son of perdition, that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. The Lord had many crowns. He has one crown. And he had a bow with no arrows. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Causing wars. Could this be World War III? Maybe. See, and that's the thing. Actual World War III fought on the scope of the entire world where we're going to see fighting in Woodstock Square or you're going to be seeing fighting in Washington, New Jersey or in, in Shelbina, Missouri or in wherever you are, okay? A world war of that scope is coming. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is this World War III? Like I said, uh, when the Lord comes back and speaks and destroys all, all of that, uh, yeah, that's a good candidate for World War III. But what about this? Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm giving you opinion. And it is my opinion that the actual World War III that is going to encompass the whole world, not just parts of the world sending their troops over there, but it's going to be fought in a theater near you. I don't believe we're going to be here for it. Not saying that we're not going to see a horrible wars to come. I ain't saying that at all. But a world fought on a war fought on the scope of the entire world, where you got fighting in Europe, fighting in North America and South America, in Antarctica even. Okay, that I believe is coming. Yes, is this it? Well, he's going to go forth conquering and conquer. Remember, the body of Christ is not on the earth, and the Christians that get left behind, some of them are going to be like, "Oh wow, we missed it." And there's going to be a great multitude killed at the very beginning. And that's probably, I believe, are going to be a lot of these sad Christians who never were of the church of the living God, who are deceived by these easy believism heretics and stuff like that. Um, they're going to be left behind, but they're going to know the truth. And they're not going to be a threat to that man of sin, the son of perdition, because he's going to exterminate them all. And the other Christians that are left behind, they're just going to fall in line with that man of sin, the son of perdition. Like I've told you before, they're going to need a common enemy. And in order to build that third temple, the mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock, needs to be out of the way. Hence, you dear sons of Ishmael, I personally believe that Lucifer, Satan, through his church, Roman Catholicism, is going to target you. Because when your Dome of the Rock 
gets destroyed, you're going to go berserk. You're going to go bat, bat, poop, crazy. And you're going to fall right into the trap of the man of sin, the son of perdition. And remember, the man of sin and the son of perdition is going to be a Hebrew, a Jew. He's going to become what he hates the most in order so that the Jewish people will get that third built, uh, temple built. Okay? And he's going to go forth conquering and conquer. And I believe the enemy he's going to go after is the sons of Ishmael, the Muslims. And he's going to rally the entire world against that common enemy, the enemy that, that they created, Mystery Babylon, Rome created. Okay? All right? Now go to Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 unto verse 11. Okay? Here's the seventh seal. Okay? The seventh seal. The seals are not being opened today. Okay? You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Like it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? We get caught up. Then that man of sin gets revealed. We just saw it in the book of Revelation. We get caught up in 4, 1. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, 6, 1 and 2. Okay? All right? Gotta rightly divide the word of truth. All right? But Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 on to verse 11, talking about the seventh seal. Okay? Check this out. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became boiled, became blood, excuse me. A great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. An asteroid? Meteorite? Or a nuclear weapon. I know it says an angel there. I know. Okay, but give you something to think about. Okay, now let's continue. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. A third of the entire global or world, world popula population. That's quite a bit of people. Okay, that's quite a bit, bit of people. Okay? The level of death and destruction when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going forth conquering and to conquer and all the plagues and all that the Lord allows to happen to destroy this earth. Is it any wonder why that he brings in a new heaven and a new earth? Okay? Even with the thousand year agrarian society that the Lord is going to establish? Hmm? Let's continue. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. Now, is that from the th uh, throne room of heaven or heaven the sky? Because remember, there are three heavens. There's the sky, the dome that covers everything, or whatever, or uh, I forget what the scriptural name, the firmament, okay? The firmament. So there's the, the sky that you and I see. There's the firmament, and then there's where God sits. There are three, okay? The three heavens, Okay, if I can rem uh, remember that, if I can remember that, I'm writing that down, three heavens, there's going to be a lot of, okay, three heaven. okay, there are going to be a lot of links for you to go through, okay, but there are the three heavens, there's the sky, there's the firmament, the dome, and then there's where God sits, is it coming from where God sits, I don't believe so, why? And the third angel sounded, and there fell, uh, verse 10, a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. So yes, uh, this differs from the great mountain burning with fire, a lamp, a lamp, a cylindrical lamp, okay? And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The definition of wormwood is right there in that verse. Bitter. Wormwood. Do you know Chernobyl? Check, check me out. Chernobyl means wormwood. And you don't even have to be of my generation to remember what happened with Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown. 
Hmm? Chernobyl, Wormwood. Uh, there were, I wrote down many verses about Wormwood, about to define what Wormwood is, but it doesn't need to, we don't need to. Uh, it's, write these down. Come on, come on, get your pen, write these down, okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 16 under verse 18. Proverbs 5, 3 under verse 5. And Jeremiah 9, verse 15. To scripturally, without question, define for you what wormwood is. Even though we don't need to because bitter is right there. And gall, bitter and gall, wormwood. Uh, wormwood is defined in, defined in that verse. I personally believe. Verse 11 is talking about a nuclear weapon. Is there going to be a nuclear war? Is World War III going to have nuclear a uh, nuclear component to it? I think so. Well, Brad, you're not being really specific about the actual World War III because I don't know. I, do, I told you that at the beginning of this video, okay? But this I do believe. That you and I are not, you and I, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, we are not going to see an actual World War III fought on the scale of the entire world, not just confined to Europe like the first two World Wars were. Okay? A World War III is going to encompass the entire world. Like I said, we're going to see fighting in the square. Okay? All right? That is the third World War Three that I believe. Okay, that, that and wormwood, nuclear. Don't be uh, don't be mistaken, dear friend. Sooner or later, there is going to be a nuclear war. And see, where most what we said about earlier, most wars, especially in scripture. It wasn't that you know, yeah, you kill the people, but they did it to get the land for crops and that kind of stuff, you get nuclear involved, not only are you killing people, but the radioactive, like I said, about the the um, the uh, Agent Orange thing, perfect example, okay? And look at now Hiroshima and Nagasaki, okay? The atomic bomb, which some like to dispute never happened like that psycho Eric John Phelps. How is he still alive, by the way? How is he still alive? Who has, well, God is, yeah, he's a Calvinist and a Trinitarian. Hmm. How is he still alive with all the information that he has been able to put out when they killed Brother Alberto Rivera as soon as they could? Hmm. But Eric John Phelps brought that up, but that the uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima were ground bursts. <laughs> Yeah, coming from the same guy who wants to make his own country provactical or whatever. I don't trust Eric John Phelps. Okay, his, his information on the Jesuits is really, really good, yes. But the scope and the depth that he has been able to do and he's still alive, God's provision uh, or controlled opposition. Okay. All right. But yes, I totally believe that there is going to be a nuclear war. But I also believe, like I've been telling you, I do not believe that we are going to see the actual nuclear war. Now go to Revelation chapter 20. Now here's where we're going to get, uh, got to watch the time here, but this is going to go as long as this needs to go. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 3. After the second coming, what happens? And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed Loosed, excuse me, loosed a little season. Loosed a little season. Okay? So, a thousand years. Verses 1 on to verse 6 encompass the kingdom of heaven. 
thousand year reign of our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Go to, hold your place here, and go to Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. It is during the kingdom of heaven where the doctrine of the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. The Sermon on the Mount will come into play during the thousand years of Christ reigning on the earth. That is when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. Not today, or not even during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because remember, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Jesus Christ said, Amos chapter 9, verses 11 out of verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Talking about when the Lord comes back at his second coming and sits as king in Jerusalem, king of the Jews, king of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ is king and Lord, Lord of the Lords, king of kings, okay? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all hills shall melt. So during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. Okay? Not factory produced, genetically modified tripe. Farming. Healing the earth after all the devastation that you read about in the book of Revelation. Okay? I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, sat the Lord God. There's the kingdom of heaven, what it's going to be like in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, That's what, what you and I have to look forward to in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, Farming. Okay, okay, and Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 19. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, okay, which our Lord destroys with his mouth by speaking, okay, in Revelation 19, okay. All right, where, 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 okay. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feasts of tabernacles. So yes, during the kingdom of heaven, there the law is going to be there. Law for sacrifices for sins? No, because it's already been paid. But thank offerings and stuff like that. Yes, the Feast of Tabernacles to go and worship the king who's going to be on the throne. Okay? All right? Our Lord is going to be king on the earth. He forgives sins. Uh, okay? If he tells you to do a sacrifice, maybe. But regardless, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Okay? And keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, the law is going to be reinstituted. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be all. You don't need faith. When you can see the guy on the throne. Faith is not necessary during the kingdom of heaven, my friend. Okay? And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if you don't have rain, you don't have no crops. You have no crops, you have no food. And if you have no food, you starve to death. Hence, again, during the kingdom of heaven, all works farming. Okay, y'all, we all going to be a bunch of farmers, brother, sister. Amen. Okay. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to the keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, it's very important to note that about the punishment thereof. Why? Because, okay, Satan, we've already seen, beg your pardon, we've already seen that Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. But you got to remember, evil, because of man, 
Evil is still on the earth and within man. Okay? A thousand years, our Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, is going to show all the earth how it's done. You know, Rome has tried to do it. China has tried to do it. England tried to do it. Okay? About having a one world nation rule all the whale. Okay? Man can't do it. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem, he is going to do it. Okay? But see, man is evil. Okay? And even though Satan is bound, evil, sin, is still going to be present within man on the earth. You, you know, hey, you, you, you Christians who think this nonsense that uh, the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble, you like the Sermon on the Mount, right? Yeah, that's all works. Okay? It's all works. All right? Evil is still present during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? It's not until... Now, let's look at verses 7 on to verse 10 in Revelation 20. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out, loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Ha ha! Gog and Magog! Hence the thumbnail. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, about the Battle of Armageddon, okay? The Battle of Armageddon, that's a shaky thing. Armageddon is the place. But some people like to t uh, tie in the Gog and Magog thing here as the Battle of Armageddon. Um, Armageddon is mentioned before the Second Coming. This is being referenced after the thousand years have expired and Satan is let loose from his prison. Okay? Okay? But, and shall go out, verse 8 again, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Hmm. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Unlike you see right across the page in Revelation 19, verse 15, where the Lord speaks and destroys all this stuff, the armies of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? So uh, at the second coming, he speaks and sends us to get the elect out from that destruction. Okay? But this, this here in Revelation chapter 20, he's sending fire from heaven. Is this World War IV? Okay? Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Oh, but there, there's your trinity again. There's your trinity again. Don't, don't fall. I mean, I understand because of Satan's church with what he began to preach from the beginning. One God and three persons. If you fall for it, I understand. Okay, I did for a while too. But the truth is, this trinity is satanic. There's your trinity. Okay? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then the great white throne of judgment. So this thing about Gog and Magog, and I've heard guys like the Perry Stone and uh, the Charismatic guys talking about Gog and Magog, that, you know, and this right there in verse 8, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, an army bigger than the army that is destroyed, the armies that are destroyed in here in uh, Revelation 19, Verse 15, okay? Bigger than that, the biggest army in the history of mankind. Bigger, 
bigger than the armies uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to uh, put together. Bigger than all the armies that are combined today. All of them. The, it says, as the sand of the sea. And sand is a bunch of little stones. Huge. Huge. Millions upon mi probably billions of people in this army. The biggest army the world has ever or will ever see. And the Lord sends fire from heaven and devours them. Now note the two differences here. Okay, I have the advantage of looking at them in the same thing because right across the page. Revelation 19 verse 15. Our Lord comes back with us at his second coming. He speaks the sword coming out of his mouth. The word of God. He speaks and destroys these armies. Okay, destroys what the, that man of sin, the son of perdition is doing. Okay, he puts Satan in the bottomless pit and the kingdom of heaven. After the thousand years of kingdom of heaven, Satan is let loose and he goes and deceives all the nations because evil is still present on the earth and deceives all the nations. And hence the greatest army that anyone could possibly imagine. And God, and it's going to compass saints, Jerusalem. Okay? And God is going to send fire from heaven. Two different armies, two different wars, Two different methods of destruction. The problem is, there are those out there who say the army of Gog and Magog, we are going to see today, it's impossible. Because number one, the body of Christ is still here. Number two, the time of Jacob's trouble hasn't happened. And number three, it's at the end of the thousand years of the kingdom of heaven. So the, uh, the true scriptural army described in Revelation 20 of Gog and Magog ain't going to happen for quite a long time. But yet you got these charismatic devils, and not just the charismatics, trying to say that this army of Gog and Magog is applicable for today for World War III. No. Even though we are seeing Magog and Magog today, the thumbnail, okay? Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. Okay? Genesis chapter 10. That uh, 33rd book, he did that uh, video. I, I like 33rd book. He did that one video. Oh. That last video that was on his channel. I like 33rd book. I do. Oh, and it's interesting to note that, that he has not put out another video since that. Ugh, that video, that last video he did. Oh. Oh, no. No, that was that was that's bad. I I loved I loved his work. His work on the Jezebel thing was really good. I, I like thirty third book, the channel thirty third book. I ain't knocking him, okay. But that last video, oh, that was a bad one. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. But never mind. Never mind. Genesis chapter ten, verses one and two. Now. About Gog and Magog. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, the Asiatics. Ham, those of Africa. Uh, Japheth, the Europeans. Okay? And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth. Gomer and Magog. Magog. Japheth. European, and Midai, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiras, okay, Japheth, okay, Japheth, now, look at this, in this verse, Tubal, Tubal, okay, Tubal, Go to, now, there is a reference to a Tubal Cain in Genesis chapter 4. But you have to remember, the bloodline of Cain, unlike the idiots of, and I'm being polite, of Shepherd's Chapel wants you to believe, the bloodline of Cain was exterminated in the flood. Okay? The bloodline of Cain was exterminated in the flood. 
Okay? And it's from that thing where these devils come up with the serpent seed doctrine. Okay? Stay away from Shepherd's Chapel. Serpent seed, I already got that written down. That will be in the description box if you have any questions. But go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. And these are not all the appearances of Tubal. Okay? Because we are getting close to uh, three hours and I, you know, but Isaiah chapter 66, verses 16 on to verse 19. 16 on to verse 19, Isaiah 66. For fire, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Note that. Okay. For by fire and by his sword, the sword of the spirit. Uh, at the second coming, the sword of his mouth by fire, fire that comes down from heaven when that big army uh, surrounds Jerusalem after the thousand years of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed, saith, uh, consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Yes, the Lord gathering all nations together so he can judge them and destroy the people who are against him. Okay? Yeah, keep that in mind, okay? And I will set a sign among them. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. To Tarshish, Pul, and Lud. That draw the bow. To Tubal and Javan. To the isles afar off. That have not heard my fame. Neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So, okay. You see Tubal Cain in Genesis 4. But Tubal has to do also with what? Japheth. Okay? Okay? Now go to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 1. One verse. We want verse one verse, okay? Uh, one verse. Come on. Fingers work with me. 1 Chronicles chapter 1. One verse. Verse 5. The sons of Japheth, Japheth, the Europeans, Gomer, Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiras. So Magog, Tubal, and Meshach. But we're going to see something interesting about Meshach. Meshach, Tubal, and Meshach are counted on to who? Japheth. Like I said, we're going to see something really interesting about uh, Meshach. Uh, First Chronicles here, uh, chapter 1, verse 17, one verse. Now check this out. Check this out. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 17. The sons of Shem. Elam and Eshur and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram and Uz and Hul and Gether and Meshach. Hmm. So obviously we have two Meshachs here. Okay? We obviously have two Meshachs here. Two different Meshachs. Okay? So we see here in 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 5, Tubal and Meshach attributed unto Japheth. But we also see it in the line of Shem. Hmm, interesting now, huh? Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 5. Gog. Check this out. Gog. Okay? 1 Chronicles 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. Check this out. Now, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but 
For as much as he defiled his father's bed, and you read about that in Genesis chapter 35, when he laid with one of uh, his father's concubines, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Okay? For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. But the birthrights was Joseph's. Hmm. And, Shem, and Meshach we see both uh, one of Shem and one of Japheth. Okay? But, now check this out. Let's keep reading. The sons, I say, of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak and Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Joel, Shammai, Shammai his son, Gog his son, Shimei his son, Micah his son, Raliah his son, Baal his son, Gog. Gog is attributed onto the line of Reuben of Israel of Shem. And remember, the Hebrews were taken out of Shem. But see, the mention here is on Reuben, whose the birthright was taken away because he went to his father's couch and laid with one of his uh, concubines and stuff like that. Okay, and hence the birthright went to Joseph, but Judah, is it not evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah? Okay, okay, so keep that in mind. So, Magog is what? Japheth. Gog, at the very least, is Shemetic. Okay, Reuben was still counted, obviously, as a Hebrew. Okay, but that defilement that Reuben did. And you got to remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition himself, is going to be a Hebrew. Satan is going to inhabit what he hates the most. Okay? All right? So Gog is associated with Shem. Okay? Now let's go to Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38. We're almost done. We're almost done. If you made it this far, good for you. Ezekiel 38, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now pay attention. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Gog is Shem. Magog is Japheth. So Gog, the land of Magog. So Shem within Japheth. Hmm. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. What Meshach is this? I believe this is the Gentilic, Japhethian Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. Okay? Yes, there was a Shemetic Meshach. Yes, there was. But there was also a Japhethian Meshach. And we see Gog, the land of Magog. Very interesting. Gog is what? Shemetic. Magog is Japhethite. Is a Japhethite. Okay? Japhethite, the Europeans. Okay? Shem. The Asiatics, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Korean, the Japanese, okay? The American Indians, okay? Okay? You with me so far? Let's continue. And say, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So Gog, again, is Shemetic. Meshach and Tubal is what? Japhethite. So a Shemite, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. 
And that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. Okay? And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army. Okay? The one that's talked about in Revelation chapter 20. Horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, there's Ham, there's Ham, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, we already read about Gomer. The house of Tograma, of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Okay? Now, this I believe in Ezekiel is making reference onto that army after the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Because in the book of Revelation, you do not see Gog and Magog appear until when? We already looked at it after the thousand years. Okay? Russia, the Vikings, they are Japheth. China, okay? China, they are Shemitic. Yes, we are seeing it. But see, the army that is the largest the world will ever see isn't going to be here for a very, very long time. We ain't going to be around to see it. I mean, we, we get redeemed and we come back in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be like the angels. We're going to see it then. But right now, today, we're not going to see this massive army that is being talked about in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. That we're not going to see. Okay? All right? Now, while we're here, skip to verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay? 14 on to verse 18. And there are those out there, you know, like I said, oh, that dear, dear uh, 33rd book. Uh, uh. But there are those out there who like wanted this to um, argue about who uh, Gog and Magog are. Uh, Magog is Japheth. Gog is Shemitic. Okay. Okay. And remember, the Hebrews were taken out. Of Shem, not him, not Japheth. Okay? But 14 on verse 18. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, thus saith the Lord God, in the day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shalt thou not know it, the kingdom of heaven? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, north, out of the north parts, okay? Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee again, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I call, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. So the Lord is going to call all these nations together so he can destroy them. Yeah. Verse 17. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of old, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. Gog. Gog is Shemitic. Gog is Shemitic. So a Shemitic nation. China? North Korea? Maybe, but a Shemitic nation. Okay? Now, in 
Ezekiel 39, verses 1 on 2, verse 11. We're almost done. Therefore, Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, China. Which one's more powerful, China or Russia? Ah, uh, that'd be China. China owns America. China has her sleeper cells within America and in Canada. Okay? We are invaded. Okay? I know Yuri Bezmenov with his love letter to America talking about the KJB and subversion. Yes, yes, and yes. But it says there, Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow, bow, singular, out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Now verse 3 right there is interesting. Because that man is in the son of perdition goes forth conquering and a conqueror, having a crown and having a bow with no arrows. Hmm. He's going to use other people as his arrows. Very interesting. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog. Magog, which is Japheth. Okay? And among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, they shall know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it has come, and it is done, said the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, and bows and the arrows, and the handstaffs and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years." Why is that? Because after the great white throne of judgment comes the new heaven and the new earth, the final dispensation, eternity, the seventh dispensation, no more sin. No more evil. See, Satan is let loose and he gets the greatest army, Gog and Magog, okay? The greatest army ever seen. And the Lord destroys that. And the great white throne of, of judgment, Satan, the Trinity is cast into the lake of fire. Okay? The great white throne of judgment, evil is vanquished. No more evil, no more sin. We got a long way to go before we see that, friends. A long way. Verse 10, so that they shall take no more, no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forests. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord God. After evil is vanquished, sin is no more. Okay? Verse 11, and it shall come to pass in that day, that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel. The valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. Yeah, because it's probably going to stink. And there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog multitude. That's what Haman means. Haman, in the book of Esther, remember how he boasts about his children, the multitude? Haman, I know it's spelled differently, it's pronounced differently, but 
Haman, multitude. Okay, that's what that means. Okay. Now verses 15 and 16. Okay. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamang Gog, the multitude of Gog. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. Thus shall they cleanse the land. So, so, it is, we're going to see a, a war. I mean, we're already seeing war with uh, the, the Vikings, uh, Russia, invading uh, Ukraine. And, you know, America shot down the, so they tell us, the, um, the balloon or something. And yes, America could be very well destroyed. But a actual world war fought on all fronts of the world. I believe before we get caught up, we're going to see tons of wars. Okay? We're not going to see all the economies destroyed while the body of Christ is on the earth because that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer is going to destroy all the economies so he can bring in the mark of the beast. Okay? We're, take America out of the equation. America is not the head of anything. Okay? The world does not revolve around America. The world does not revolve around Germany, England. No. And our enemies hate this. The world revolves around Israel. Not the Roman, not Rome and the Vatican. Israel. It revolves around the Jew. Because salvation is of the Jew. For the redemption of the purchased possession, brethren, we are going to see Hades on earth. Yes. Nothing compared to the time of Jacob's trouble, which is coming. Okay? I believe that an actual third world war fought on all stages of the world. Canada. America. Mexico. Okay? Abu Dhabi. Okay? Africa. Europe, of course, but a scale, a war on that scale. Remember, World War I and World War II. We didn't see fighting here in America or in Canada or in Tijuana. No, but the Third World War, I believe, we're going to see it in Canada, in America, and in Mexico, Tijuana. Okay, I believe that. Okay, and I believe the scripture also alludes to that fact that the Third World War that is coming, we're not going to see. We are going to see wars. Absolutely. But I don't think we're going to see... I mean, hey, like I said, Russia can nuke America. Okay? Russia can nuke America. Absolutely. China can nuke America. And would we nuke them back? See, that's the thing. You nuke us, we're going to nuke you. And the nukes between... The Russians and China dwarf us. And remember how big Russia and China is. If they drop a, a nuke bomb in the middle of the country of America and here on the continent, not only is it going to affect the continental United States, it's going to affect, it's going to affect Canada. It's going to affect Mexico. They drop 20 nuke bombs on America, wipe out the continent, of America, it's going to affect the radioactive poison. It's going to affect Canada. It's going to affect Mexico. Okay? And yes, they'll destroy America, but they won't get any... The oil reserve that is in America that for some reason we don't want to tap into but be dependent on the oil from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I mean, we could see that. We could see that. Is that going to be World War III? Even if there is nuclear war before the redemption, and I don't believe there's going to be a nuclear war before the redemption of the purchased possession. I could be very wrong. 
Like I said, this is my opinion based upon scripture. Okay? But see, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What do we have to fear, brethren, church of the living God? See, these charismatics who are big promoters of all this nonsense trying to bring uh, revelation and stuff in revelation to make them applicable today like Gog and Magog, <coughs> that big army. No, that's not coming for a very long time. Or about Armageddon, that's a place, okay? And the stuff that they're trying to make applicable that they're taking from the book of Revelation is pertinent for the time of Jacob's trouble or after the thousand years after the kingdom of heaven. So I do not personally believe that we will see a actual World War III on the scope of fighting on every continent while the church of the living God is on the earth. We will see wars. America will probably maybe even be bombed or destroyed. Okay, yes. But an actual world war... Because think about it, brethren. You and I here in America, if we get nuked, how many nations are going to applaud that? And think of what happens when the Jesuits put in power a female president, if they do. God help us. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you to you brethren who contributed, fought to this. Um, like I said at the beginning, this is opinion based upon scripture. Okay. Um, comments and whatnot, fine, that's good. Uh, I just wanted to share this with you um, because a lot of the Christianity out there who go off on this kind of stuff. Remember, the book of Revelation is not written to us. Okay? Yes, it's written for us to learn from, yes. But doctrinally, it doesn't apply to us. It's not for us. It's not to us, excuse me. It's for us, yes. The whole of Scripture is for me. It's not all written to me. See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. And Christians don't rightly divide the word of truth. That's going to be it for this video. Going to be a lot of links in this video for you to go over. Um, like I say, you disagree with all, any of this? That's fine. It's fine. Even more power to you. Like I said, this is not doctrinal. This is giving you my opinion based upon scripture. Okay? So, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, brethren, thank you for your prayers. We love you. Uh, we pray for so many of you. Pray for one another. And just thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.